for us to keep our <laughs> checking our stars. What does the Constitution say? Which Constitution allowed the Pope and the Colonial Council? <laughs> Suddenly you've got, uh, you know, the uh, very popular thing. I think even my com comrade president here referred to about land. Yeah. There's established ANC policy, which is in the Freedom Chart. If you come to me to say, you know, let's still do something about the land, I'd say bear in mind what we've said in that Freedom Charter for many decades. The land shall be shared among those who work it. That is a very well thought out position, strategic position with regard to solving a number of issues here. The national question, the land question, how to handle it. You no, know, somebody put up. No, 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 no. Let's take the land and give it to our people. So I say, me, I belong to the ANC. Who, according to the ANC in South Africa, is not our people? There's nobody who's not our people. That's ANC policy. Somebody else's policy might be very different. But that's why the ANC says this, land shall be shared among those who work it. Black and white and whoever they are. So you can see that trying to find positive or negative clauses in the Constitution, trying to even find what the Constitution says, is already affirming Masrui's position that we are slaves by consent. So, the independence of Africa is quite special because it is a transition from slavery by coercion to slavery by consent. <laughs>
you see, there is a problem. There is a problem. Uh, when he analyzed the independence trajectory of Africa, Ali Mazrui made a commentary in his Towards Pax Africana. One of his commentaries was that the independence of Africa is quite special because it is a transition from slavery by coercion to slavery by consent. <laughs> so you can see that trying to find positive or negative clauses in the Constitution, trying to even find what the Constitution says, is already affirming Mazrui's position that we are slaves by consent. So. We must remember that actually one of the legal luminaries in the University of the Witwatersrand, um, Professor Hallo. At one time, there was a book of essays written in his honor. He was old enough to say goodbye to the University of the Witwatersrand. So a book of essays was written in his honor. The title of the book is in Latin, fiat justitia. It, didn't, it doesn't, doesn't conclude the whole phrase. The whole phrase is fiat justitiam ruat celum, meaning let justice be done even if the heavens may fall. <laughs> so we have a clue of what can be done by the conquered peoples, not only of this country, but of Africa, which was given as a divine gift of land, I my God. Divine gift of land? No. So we have a clue. The clue is justice must be done. Even if the heavens will fall, justice must be done. And so, and so we must remember the moral and ethical imperative to overcome this epistemicide. Actually, Ngugi Wationgo reminds us of this when he writes his own book that is well known to you, Decolonizing the Mind. We also have Kwasi Wiredu, who reminds us in his essay on the need for conceptual decolonization. He reminds us to against epistemicide. Is it really justice against epistemicide when we want to hold oh, every day multiple sessions asking people, come and tell us what you think about the constitution? What is that? Are we really acting against epistemicide? It looks like it looks like something is going wrong. Okay. Let us just ask one question. Since the constitution that prevails at the moment is totally devoid of the word Ubuntu, it of course means we are not there as a people. We are not there even in philosophical terms. Our paradigm of constitution making is simply absent. Remember that in the 1993 post Ambro, the Ubuntu word was there. In 1996, everybody forgot that Ubuntu was at least there in 1993 as a footnote. Are we really in need of a psychologist? <laughs> to explain the collective amnesia? I don't think so. Something is wrong ethically. Something is wrong ethically. So my point is, is the first and the primary question to ask, to whom does the land belong? Sovereign title to territory. If we solve that, 
then we can come to the simple question of land redistribution. Before we, de we determine to whom the land belongs, let us remember we simply want to remain in the captivity of epistemic and material enslavement. And that should. Have you ever seen the word apartheid in that constitution? I have searched it very closely and I have not. Have you ever seen the word atrocities in that constitution? No. You know why you haven't seen it? It's because that constitution, with all the other nice things that we heard, is a lullaby song to ensure the continued survival of white power. It's a product of a negotiated Orwellian manipulation of the former colonized masses to like what's coming, but to live at their own expense and accept it. That's the, for me, that's the document. Mm. And I keep saying this, mm. watch very closely in South Africa, who praises this constitution? Which NGOs tell us this is the best thing? Which individuals tell us this is the best? And you go to Mdanzane now and pick up an old lady who has a pit toilet. Tell them they live in a country with the best constitution and you'll see what she'll tell you. Go to an NGO, these white NGOs that pretend they are not political when all they are extensions of white power who say they protect the constitution. They protect it because it's a document they value because it maintains what they stole, what they have. 